Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are going to be talking about a Rust game engine. We've covered this a number of times on the channel. It is called Bevy and Bevy 0.8 was just updated with a bevy of new features. What you see in front of you, this is one of the new examples that is actually showcasing one of the key new features of Bevy 0.7, uh, which was the new skeletal animation system. What you see is a ton of foxes running in a circle, all skeletally animated. So this was actually added in 0.7, but when I did the 0.7 video, I Apparently used a uh, less than pretty example. So this is the new example added in 0.8, showcasing a feature in 0.7. But first off, what is a bevy? Well, bevy is, uh, I would say, one of two Rust-based game engines I would recommend checking out today based off of maturity. Don't worry, at the end of this video, I will have a number of recommendations for you. Uh, but bevy and Firox are probably the two forerunners. There used to be a couple of other ones that were more prevalent, but these two seem to have really come to the front. Uh, bevy is data-driven. Uh, it has an ECS-based system in it. It's completely open source. And of course, it is Rust-based. And the other thing about it is it's simple. So it's very streamlined in the way things work. So in terms of features and functionality, it's not, a, a, it doesn't feel like a, an engineering project like some of the earlier examples did that kind of used Rust features because Rust had those features as opposed to because, you know, they actually made sense. But in terms of features and functionality, you can see what is in front of you. This is entirely open source under the MIT or the Apache 2 license, uh, there is a book to get you up and running. There is a ton to like about Bevy. And if you are thinking about doing Rust game development, Bevy is definitely one of those areas to consider. The code is very straightforward, and this is coming from someone that doesn't really know how to use Rust. I can read Bevy code and immediately make sense of it, which is something I probably couldn't say about some of its predecessors like Amethyst. Um, so what is in Bevy 0.8? Well, actually quite a bit, but a lot of it is actually around uh, the new camera system, which enabled a number of other new features. So we're just going to do the TLDR version. If you want, there is a ton of detail on everything we are talking about today. Uh, we're, again, not going into that level of detail, uh, but you'll get an idea of what is in new in 0.8. Again, a lot of it comes around this new camera system. There's also a new material system in place. So again, the TLDR version. There's the new material system. Custom shaders are now easier to define. Uh, new material trait, you can kind of define them as these simple text formats. Uh, the camera-driven rendering, that is the big new thing. So each camera is now configured what it renders and how it renders it. This enables you to do camera layering. You can do split screening. You can do render to texture. You can do camera port. So you can do all kinds of camera based effects that you couldn't under the way it was organized before. So every camera is now in charge of what it sees and how it renders it. So again, this also and there's some things that go with that to make it easier to work with, such as a simple split screen property. So this is probably the biggest new feature of Bevy 0.8 is that uh, new camera re-architecture. It has a lot of trickle down effects. And again, if you read the full release notes, you're gonna see exactly what that brings you in this situation. We also got built-in shader modulization. So many built-in shaders and functions are now importable. So you can basically import an ex a shader and easily extend it. Uh, custom shaders can now import the PBR shader logic from the built-in shader, which should make uh, getting up and going a lot faster. Uh, there is now support for spotlights. Uh, so it emits lights in a cone shape from a fixed point. I'm actually kind of surprised that doesn't have it. One of the very first lights, basically every game engine normally has an ambient light, a point light, and a spotlight to start. Uh, but yeah, Bevy 0.8 adds the spotlight type. Uh, we've also got uh, visibility inheritance. So if you can hide an entity, it now hides all of its descendants in a hierarchy, which is obviously quite useful. So you don't have to iterate through a hierarchy of entities. If you want to hide them all, you can just hide them at the top level and all of the child ent entities will now be hidden. I believe that is configurable. So you don't have to have that behavior, but I'm not, don't quote me on that one. Um, upgraded to WGPU 0.3 using the new uh, ergonomic WGSL shader uh, syntax. I believe the WGPU, that's a web GPU, um, the new browser-based uh, GPU way of doing things in the future. Uh, automatic mesh tangent generation. If tangents are missing for a mesh, generate them through mixed space. Uh, rendering optimization, so parallel frustrum calling and unstable sorts for unbatched render phases. So in order to explain this one in simplest terms, um, the viewport or frustrum calling is basically, let's get rid of all of the things that aren't necessarily part of the scene so that we don't render a bunch of things that we can't see. It now performs that process in parallel, so it should be a fast 
faster process. Uh, scene bundling, so you can easily spawn scenes using normal Bevy bundle and extend them uh, with new components and children. Uh, scripting, uh, so they've got, so internally they're never going to support anything other than Rust as a logic language, but they are making these new untyped uh, entity component system based APIs so that people can extend it. If you read down below, you'll find there's actually an implementation project for JavaScript and TypeScript that is using this new API. So although they're not going to provide third party language support for things like, again, like TypeScript, Python, Lua, whatever. Uh, they're doing an API so that other people can. Uh, we also have some improvements to the ECS, ECS being the entity component system. Uh, this is a way of structuring your code, logic, and data uh, in, in hopefully a scalable manner. Uh, again, some refactoring around ECS as well. We've got some improvements to reflection, which is for uh, basically figuring out what a type is at runtime. Uh, hierarchy commands updates now use transactional commands to ensure hierarchical consistency at all time. And the Bevy UI now uses Taffy uh, for the UI layer. Also got some improvements for UI. The UI is now on a per camera basis as well, and it should in theory just work. So if you want to get more information on all of this stuff, such as the new material system, you can find out about it here the new camera system, which also again enables split screening, uh, very easy, but also going to create, so you can do things like portal effects. So if you wanted to have like a uh uh, security monitors showing somewhere else in the scene. You can easily now do that render to texture with the new camera system. You can also do render layering. Um, so multiple rendering things on top of each other. There's all kinds of new improvements in that realm. Again, all the details of everything we just talked about here in a heck of a lot more detail. Also got a couple of other things that didn't get mentioned, such as uh, the new... Um, base polygon types, so definitely some important performance improvements and so on. Uh, so there is some nice stuff going on in Bevy 0.8, but I think ultimately the, the biggest thing is probably the new camera system and the new material system, but quite a bit to like in that. If you're interested, uh, Bevy is entirely open source. Again, uh, it's Apache and MI2 licensed. Uh, so I guess it's take your pick which one you like. Both those are really good licenses with no real kind of gotchas attached to them. Um, it is public open source. One of those things I want to warn you about, though, uh, it also depends on you being very very current in your uh, Rust tooling. I was one version out of date uh, in mine and you run into some default Enum issues. So you want to be running the newest of new Rust tool chains. By the way, if you're on Mac OS also, uh, if you installed via Homebrew, you can't update via Rust up. Now that's obviously a no brainer, but it's a no brainer that I just spent a half an hour tripping over myself uh, because of the stupidity of it. Uh, so make sure uh, that you are running one of the newest versions. I I'm running 1.62. I think of the Rust tool chain, uh, just run um, Rust C and then space dash capital V. Make sure you are on 1.62 or later or the code will not compile. Just one of those things to be aware of. When you are running with Bevy, uh, it's very much an in-development engine and it is using the most current versions of the Rust tool chain. Um, so one of those things to be aware of uh, with this guy. Also, if you're interested in Rust, but maybe... Um, Bevy isn't doing it for you. Well, there are definitely other options out there. Some of the earlier options were Amethyst and Piston. Both of those have kind of been, they're, they're kind of like first generation game engines that were more like a learning exercise, I think, in the end. So a lot of like lessons learned from developing these went into the learning about these two. Now, I've done hands-on videos with Bevy and Firefox. Um, Firefox used to be called Rage, by the way. So if you're interested, those are both available here. Uh, and then we got a number of different options. And then there's a, a website out there I highly recommend you check out called Are We Game Yet? Which is sort of like uh, a resource repository for Rust game developers. So this was uh, using Rust for game development in 2022. I will have this linked in the link article down below. But what we are talking about today, ladies and gentlemen, was Bevy, because Bevy 0.8 was just released, I think it was about four days ago. Um, again, if you are going to check it out, make sure that your Rust version is the most up-to-date you can. Um, and yeah, it's, it's very easy to work with. Otherwise, basically uh, just... Uh, Git clone it and then just run it using cargo and you're good to go. Uh, so that is a bevy and open source game engine for Rust. Again, one of the two I probably recommend. If you're doing 3D game development, Bevy and Firox are the two that I would definitely consider. Firox has a little bit more on the tooling side. So if you're looking for more like a Unity-like experience, that's probably where you want to go. Whereas Bevy is probably the the easiest to grok, in my humble opinion. Uh, and it's probably the one that I would go with when I start. Actually, at, at some point, I'm going to finally get around to playing with Rust. And when I do so, I will do so using Bevy. Just because I find Bevy, uh, the code, very simple to understand. Uh, so if you want to check out an open source uh, Rust game engine, Bevy 0.8 was just released. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.